It is recording. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start. Welcome, and thank you for attending this week's live Thursdays at noon, which is on Tuesday this week. Um, we will be recording this and posting it in our onto our websites after the fact for later viewing. But first, and most importantly, we acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe peoples in the Williams and Huron Robinson Treaties area. We recognize the long history of First Nations and Metis peoples on this land and show respect to them today. We acknowledge our neighbors, the Wata Mohawks, and the First Nations of Moose Deer, Shawnaga, Wasatsking, Magnetowan, Hemi Inlet, Nipissing, and Dokies. We're back during this provincial election to give the candidates seeking your vote in Paris San Muskoka the opportunity to vote directly on the issues. Today, we have consultant Graydon Smith. Hi, Graydon. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm well, thank you. So our Bracebridge readers know you, um, but for those of you outside of the, the community at Bracebridge, can you introduce yourself to the people and um, share a little bit of information for us? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, again, my name is Graydon Smith. I'm a, a married father of two, uh, live in Bracebridge, but grew up in Port Sydney. My uh, folks owned a, a gas station, a restaurant there for about 30 years, and that's where a lot of people first started to meet me because we had so many people uh, come in and out of there uh, over the years. Uh, went to high school in Huntsville, and uh, a good portion of my life was there, but uh, business and some other things brought me to uh, Bracebridge, and I had the opportunity to get involved in a service club here in the Kinsman Club, uh, and really um, found out that I, I loved giving back. My my parents had taught me that as uh, an important value uh, when I was younger, uh, and, and I found that service club work incredibly rewarding. Uh, so people suggested that I run for a municipal council, um, and, uh, and I did, and first got elected in 2006 elected as a town and district councillor. And then uh, in 2010, uh, ran for mayor and was very fortunate uh, to become mayor. Uh, and I'm still humbled about that to this day, uh, to become mayor of Bracebridge uh, and be a district councillor uh, as well for that entire time. So um, I've invested a lot of time and energy in working not only for the folks uh, in the Bracebridge community, but through all of Muskoka as a district councillor. Um, and uh, my colleagues uh, in the municipal uh, sector thought enough of me to, to make me president of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario a couple of years ago as well. So that really took me to Queen's Park working on behalf of municipalities uh, advocating for uh, you know what we needed uh, and, and getting me uh, quite comfortable with um, you know using my uh, good loud voice to, to make sure that um, folks are well represented. Yeah, nice. I uh, didn't hadn't realized that you and I are both uh, Hoya alumni. There Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's questions then. Um, why is this ne next step into provincial politics um, one that you decided that was so important? You kind of did just answer that, but more importantly, why the Conservative Party? Well, uh, two things. I think that the next step uh, for me uh, is because it's a chance to help more people with the issues that are important to them. Of course, over my life as a as a mayor and elected official, I've had thousands of conversations with people and had many people actually encourage me to run provincially someday if that opportunity ever came up. And and why the Conservative Party? Well, they've always you know fit my core values of being uh, fiscally conservative but socially progressive. I take the 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 name you know progressive conservative very seriously, uh, and uh, you know I'm I'm honored to have that opportunity uh, to to represent uh, this party uh, in the Perry South Muskoka riding. Norm Miller, of course, did for 21 uh, years um, and and has done a lot of great work, and I want to carry on. Uh, that great work, but uh, also make sure that I have an opportunity to listen to everybody uh, and reflect uh, what's on their minds to Queen's Park. Uh, and I think, um, again, in, in my various roles, I've uh, been somebody that that does that well, uh, and I look forward to the opportunity to do that after June 2nd. So talking about carrying on work, um, how would your party advance the actions proposed by the Truth and Reconciliation Report actions in the MMIWG report? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to recognize that we're um, right near the first anniversary of the discovery of um, the mass graves uh, at the school in Kamloops. Um, and again, um, 
just uh, reflect on that moment, uh, which is uh, a, a watershed moment. And I think the way um, much of the public um, ha has um, really come to understand uh, that we have uh, an incredible amount of work to do uh, for real truth and reconciliation. Uh, I was proud uh, as part of my time as mayor to be part of the Muskoka and Area Indigenous Leadership Table, which brought leaders in Muskoka uh, of the towns and townships together with Indigenous leaders to work on uh, uh, mutual issues uh, and carry on conversations to make sure that we were forging good and strong relationships. And, uh, you know, I certainly would uh, want to carry on that work again through the entire riding with all the Indigenous leaders. Um, for me to learn from them, uh, you know, there's a, a, a learning uh, opportunity and, and journey that I'm on to understand Indigenous history uh, and how I can best help um, as a leader with truth and reconciliation. Uh, so uh, for me, it's a lot uh, more about listening um, and then uh, taking what I learn and working with an indig working with Indigenous leadership um, to implement um, those those measures. And I know our party is very much committed to that as well. Nice. Thank you for that. Um, and then fourth important issue is health care. Um, so how would you advocate for health care in Perry San Muskoka, Almagua? Well, I continue to be the same strong leader on health care that I've been uh, during my many years, uh, again, as a mayor and an elected official. Um, I've been doing it already. Uh, this uh, started really in earnest. And, uh, the, the first day that I became mayor, healthcare uh, was an issue, and the issue of hospitals specifically uh, in the Muskoka area and what the future of sites in Huntsville and Bracebridge uh, would hold. Uh, worked together with, uh, of course, my good friend and, and colleague Scott Aitchison when he was mayor of Huntsville to ensure that services remained uh, in this area, uh, and also that you know the hospitals were strengthened with a long-term plan uh, to retain both sites. Uh, and uh, I worked to doggedly. Um, and consistently to assure that would happen. Many, many meetings with many different health ministers uh, advocating for what we need in this area. Uh, and of course, we had that wonderful announcement a few weeks ago uh, that the hospital would be moving to its stage two planning phase, which is really all about uh, how we get those two sites uh, and, and that money that, that is booked to build those two sites. So, um, you know, that was a, a success not only of mine, but of the many people that helped and had input uh, along the way. Uh, but it was something that I was incredibly interested in. At the same time, we know that there are people that need uh, family doctors in the area um, and have continued to work on that through an association with the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, the 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 government uh, announced an, an expansion of that school as well as making it stand alone. We see students from that school come to this area every year in their third year, seven students uh, in uh, Bracebridge and Huntsville and some in Perry Sound as well. Um, and those are opportunities to have young doctors come back and practice when they're done their studies after they've been exposed to this area. So I always made it a priority to build relationships with them as I did to build a relationship with any visiting doctor that was considering uh, coming here and meeting with them and their families. Um, so, uh, you know, we know healthcare is a priority. We know we have an aging population in Perry Sound and Muskoka, uh, and I'll continue to work uh, very, very hard on that. I was also the chair of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario Health Task Force, uh, which again had me in front of multiple ministers of health over the years, uh, advocating for uh, not only that municipal point of view, but one that, that's in common with uh, all of our communities around uh, paramedicine, uh, around uh, long term care as well uh, and uh, many other facets of the healthcare system so I'll just I'll keep on keeping on yeah and, and the and the Perry sound side the obstetrical unit of our health center has been closed um, due to staffing issues um, so so it's every state of age long-term care the family care right to right to birth yeah um, and, and we know that you know that the, the province of course uh, um, has been through uh, an exceptional time with COVID, but their their consideration for healthcare um, and, and the needs uh, the, to invest in this system, of course, are very very high. And we've seen uh, a lot of opportunities for um, the province, uh, and they've taken those opportunities to to make announcements to continue to invest in healthcare and long term care. Um, then that's uh, incredibly important as well. Yeah, right. Um, COVID. It has been the talk of the world last two years now. Get asked this question when we did the, but um, can you remind our listeners who are today the grade that you give the province and and your party 
response for COVID-19 and, and why, why that's the great. Thanks, sir. I'll, I'll just tell you that I'm having a, a little bit of a connection issue hearing you, but um, I think you asked me about the, the government's COVID uh, response. You know, I give it an A minus. Uh, I think, of course, um, it's been an incredibly difficult and exceptional time. It's been uh, something that the world has never seen unfold in real time with decisions that had to be made that were very, very challenging. And I know Premier Ford didn't shy away from those challenges and um, made uh, many, many decisions uh, that were, were hard, hard ones uh, over the course of the last couple of years. But um, we, of course, have had a loss of life in this province, and that's to be um, reflected upon uh, and learned from. Um, at the same time, uh, we've had a province that has come through this relative to other provinces uh, fairly well. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with the, the effort that not only Premier Ford, but Minister Elliott uh, has put in. Um, and also a lot of the things that don't get talked about, such as the support for various sectors, whether it was small business, uh, again, whether it was the municipal sector, uh, which I was intimately uh, aware of, uh, and, the, and the billions of dollars that the government provided to make sure that uh, municipalities and small businesses and individuals could, you know, stay afloat during what were incredibly challenging times. So um, there's a, a lot of ways to, to measure um, pandemic performance, but I think when you take it uh, all together, uh, I've had a lot of people tell me how impressed they were with Premier Ford uh, and the government's uh, actions during what was an incredibly difficult time. So it appear, we have one more question that we had sent out um, ahead of time, and then we have readers' questions that have been submitted, and um, we've been asking them of all candidates as they've come on. Um, so the last question was, what will your party do to manage the cost of living increases in Perry Sound, Muskoka? I'll make. Well, there's no question that life is more and more expensive uh, every day for folks and affordability is a huge and key consideration uh, for me and for the party. Uh, you know, we've seen measures taken already, whether that was license plate uh, rebates, that was money back in, in people's pockets, whether that's a planned reduction uh, in gas tax, whether that's been um, the uh, lift tax credit that's been expanded to uh, $50,000 and, uh, and less. Again, these are all measures designed to make sure that um, you know, life does get more affordable. And uh, that's the, the number one issue I hear from folks when I go to door to door um, is that you know, the cost of gas is, is out of sight uh, and they wish somebody would do something about it. And uh, you know, we were the first party that said we would do something about it. And we're the only party that you know will actually get that done with something that's a sustainable uh, plan that that makes sense. So you know we've been uh, always uh, here on the affordability front for folks, and we'll continue to be. Yes, perfect. Thank you. And and sorry, maybe maybe I'll just mention housing in there too. Sorry yeah. if I could, because uh, the affordability piece is, is such a big question. But you know, specific to housing and specific to the challenges around housing that uh, our uh, you know folks are facing, uh, we know we need to build more homes. And as a as a mayor, um, I can't tell you how many uh, hundreds and hundreds of homes you know I helped to approve to get built in this area, uh, and we need more. And and it's throughout the entire housing continuum. So we've got. Uh, purpose-built rentals on the go. We've got, um, you know, kind of those uh, regular, I guess you'd call them mid-sized homes for folks on the go. Um, but we also know that there are investments from this government in affordable housing and supportive housing. And, and one that, you know, I would point out um, as a specific thing that I'm uh, very proud that the government supported and I was able to support through the district at the time was Alex's Place, which is a supportive housing project uh, in Bracebridge that has a, a number of units for at-risk youth to uh, keep them uh, out of a homelessness situation and not only do that but help them with uh, addiction and employment challenges and make sure that they have the very best opportunity to get back in their feet and, and again that wouldn't have happened without uh, the investment uh, of provincial dollars from this government uh, to ensure that those types of units are available there's a phase two to that which are, which are also um, affordable units um, open uh, to uh, seniors as well. So th there's investments in all parts of the continuum. And I think there's a real need to continue to work with municipalities uh, and make sure that you know, their official plans and that their zoning bylaws are keeping up with the need that we're seeing in the communities and the province uh, can be there to uh, assist that, to reduce red tape uh, and make sure that we continue to see more housing starts here. We had over 100,000 housing starts in Ontario last year uh, and many of those were purpose 
purpose-built rentals, and many of those were right here in Muskoka, but we need more of it, so we want to create a faster pathway to it. Yeah, that's, yes. Thank you for that. And there's two other questions that I, I missed, sorry, before the question. We'll keep them fairly short. But you had to leave by 12.35, and it's already 12.21. Um, so about building and development and people coming to the area and needing housing that they can do. How about sustainable transit in Perry Sound Muskoka communities? There is um, transit in other regions, um, uh, in Bracebridge and Huntsville, and maybe even Graven has, has it. But in Perry Sound, we don't have uh, public transit, and neither in Almaguan side. Um, so can you talk to me a little bit about public transit? Yeah, and, and transit, of course, is, is trickier uh, the smaller the community gets, which seems to be almost a little bit uh, inverse to the w to the way that uh, many people would think about it. But, uh, you know, I was really proud to, uh, again, lead uh, the charge for the uh, implementation of transit in Bracebridge by um, buying a, a single bus, which made uh, a simple loop. Um, but it's it's been effective, and we've continued to see uh, ridership grow. That's happened because we've had investments from the province, uh, investments from from this government uh, to make sure that uh, you know our, our system can stay sustain sustainable, uh, and you know I'd love to see that happen in in other communities. Sit down and talk with them about um, their their transit needs and plans. Um, you know, one of the stories that really resonated with me when we first started our bus was uh, a lady that I just bumped into on the street, and she was at a, a bus stop in Bracebridge, and and um, and she said, "Are you the mayor?" I said, "Yeah." She, I said, "What are you up to?" And she said, "I'm I'm going to see my grandson." And um, you know, I can do that on this bus for a couple of bucks, um, but. You know, prior to that, I had to take uh, cabs to and fro, and now the money I'm saving uh, using the bus, I can spend on my grandson. And, and boy, she was almost in tears when she was telling me that. Um, and I thought that was just a, a, an incredibly touching um, and poignant, you know, personal story about um, how how impactful transit can be uh, in communities. So, uh, you know, the the desire to have transit not only within communities but between communities, and we've seen the Highway 11 corridor bus, um, you know, remain strong. Uh, and again, uh, I would I would love to work with communities on the experiences that I've had uh, in implementing a system uh, in my community that I've led uh, and. and to see how that can translate and relate to other opportunities in other communities. And of course, public transit, um, we keep hearing, uh, greenhouse, greenhouse gas, because we hear that the highest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions, which includes driving our own vehicles, right? Um, so how do we, how do you Emissions drop as demand and increases with the and the increasing urgency of climate crisis. So, what are the I, I'm sorry. Can I ask you to ask that question again? I, I just lost you for about five seconds. No worries, and I was all over the place. I'm happy. So, the highest contributor by far to greenhouse gas emissions in Perry Sound Muskoka is the transportation sector. Hmm. How will we ensure that these emissions drop dramatically as demand? By the urgency of the climate crisis, as demanded by the urgency of the climate crisis. Yeah, thank you for the question. You know, first of all, I, I recognize that um, you know there is a, a, a real challenge around getting people um, around in in Perry Sound, Muskoka. Uh, it's a vast and significant geography, and uh, for me to get to some points of it uh, takes almost two hours. And we know we've got people every day that. Um, go to work and hop in their car, but uh, more significantly, in some cases, hop in their truck because that's what they need to drive to get themselves and their tools and, and their workers to work. Um, we we know that um, we, we need to move and, and transition towards uh, a lower carbon footprint and lower output. And that's why, you know, I'm really excited that this government has taken that to heart uh, and, and want to be a leader in moving our entire auto sector to uh, electrification and the, the future that is there for us, not only by um, mining in the ring of fire uh, and bringing prosperity to the north, but also by uh, kind of retooling and um, and moving our auto sector to to one that supplies batteries for electric vehicles, um, and and they want to do that fairly quickly and make those investments today. So, you know, I, I'd like to envision a future where we're seeing uh, fewer vehicles on the road that are carbon emitting and more vehicles on the road that are. Uh, 
electrified uh, and that a lot of that uh, uh, the components in those vehicles is happening uh, right here in Ontario and that's not only going to benefit uh, Perry Sound Muskoka of course that's going to benefit the entire province and the, the country. Perfect. Thank you for that, Graydon. I do see that a guest has joined us. Diane has found us despite our having to change up everything. And another person by the name of Dan. Dan or Diane, would one of you like to unmute and ask Graydon a question? Being done. I do have some submitted questions and we'll go through them for a few minutes and then we'll talk about 3, uh, 1234 to do the wrap up Graydon and then we'll let you come to me very sound for your, um, your events. So the first one is from David Tom of Torrance. Um, he says that he's a, has a property, owns property in Muskoka Lakes. And his question is, summer weekend traffic can overburden highways 11 and 400. Um, predictable as a lovely Muskoka sunset, he says. If a lack work to have the Provincial Transit Agency Metrolinx study a seasonal weekend extension of GO Transit up the Richmond Hill line to Gravenhurst, Bracebridge and Huntsville. Um, that kind of goes along, I guess, with the Northlander. Yeah, and, and thank you for the question. And, and I would say that the Northlander piece is a critical piece there because, uh, you know, there's an existing business plan, not only to connect our area, but the communities that are farther north from us, including South River and the, in Perry Sound District, and then uh, up into, into the farther north. And I'm really excited about that um, because I think not only will it alleviate some of the transportation and, and transit challenges that people see on weekends, but it provides an opportunity uh, for the entire, you know, breadth of that schedule to move people north and south, um, get cars off the road, uh, and make it safer for people to, uh, for example, if you're in the north, get to uh, perhaps an appointment that you have in Toronto, or for people that uh, are in the Toronto area to come to us uh, and spend some time. And one of the other things that I also thought about too is that, you know, it really opens up the north for a lot of us that are already here in Perry Sound, Muskoka to go even further north uh, and enjoy many of the incredible communities in that line. So I think th that that is the more likely uh, path um, than doing something with Metro Links at this point because the government is already uh, and this party has already invested $75 million uh, in making that happen. They've been maturing that business plan and, and want to get that train back on the tracks as quickly as possible. Yeah, nice. Thank you. We have one, uh, two questions that are similar on the issue of dental dentists. So one is from Heidi. She's from Perry Sound and she writes, my mother recently applied and received her dental card for seniors. This is great for those in the low income category. The problem is she can't use it. We tried registering her dental card with the Perry Sound District North Bay Perry Sound District Health Unit and have been told that there are no dentists that can accept this card. She would have to drive two hours to North Bay and does not have a car, nor can she drive at 84 years of old, years of age. So she wants to know, I don't know why a benefit like this exists if it can't be used. Do you want me to mesh it with this other question? Um, I, I mean, I can take that that on its own unless they're uh, very, very similar um, and say that obviously that's um, seems to be a, a uh, you know, a fairly exceptional situation um, and any program that the government implements would want to make sure that it's available to people that that need it. So, uh, you know, I could say certainly as as your next MPP, I would be uh, more than prepared to dig into an issue like that, try and understand um, what it is about the, the, the current dentists uh, in, in her home area that um, are excluding her from using that program. And if there's a way to, to make that happen and take away the need for the car and the need for the two hour trip and make sure that she gets the care through that program that she needs. I have a relative in a similar situation. They had to uh, drive to the Omegan side for care under that program. So Dale McQuillan asked, would the candidates like to comment on OHIP sponsored eye care for seniors? Um, why, uh, how is it lacking in current levels for services rendered? Um, I, maybe no wonder a dentist do not want to see their industry follow the same for um, OHIP for um, eye care optometry. 
uh, and the negotiations that are happening with the province right now. Yeah, and, and as someone that, you know, uh, is hoping to be elected and hasn't been elected, it's a little more challenging for me to comment on a situation where uh, with the uh, eye care piece for seniors, I, I know that there are active negotiations going on, um, but I know that the, you know, Minister Elliott uh, made it clear uh, several times that they were uh, certainly willing to talk that they'd had offers on the table and, um, you know, for whatever reason that, um, you know, there wasn't the, the response that they'd hoped from um, the eye care providers. We obviously want to make sure that uh, seniors, whether it's eye care, or whether it's dental, uh, continue to get the services that they need. Uh, and again, as your local MPP, uh, that's a, an issue that's important to me if it's important to you uh, and one that I would uh, look into further and, and try and find uh, out uh, more about it. Uh, and and find any ways that uh, you know I can help move that along. But uh, my primary goal is to be here to represent the interests of the uh, folks uh, in our area uh, and make sure that uh, I'm doing that well. Perfect. Um, another question here is we received it today. It's from Diane. Diane, fine with us today. I see her there. So uh, I will read her question aloud. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Perfect. Over the past four years of the Ford government, we have witnessed a lack of long-term planning and a disregard for our environment. A more reliable transportation system is not another highway. We do need a dedicated environmental policy that addresses our climate crisis, not more cuts to environmental protection and programs. During your time as mayor of Bracebridge, we have witnessed the same local examples of this lack of environmental planning writes Diane. Um, she gives three examples. One, the clear cutting that took place across from Home Depot left vacant while development occurred across the street. Clear cutting corner road four for a gas station on Cedar Lane that should have been included in the overall plan in the Walmart Home Depot parking lot. Four has called in the Sir, I'm 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 losing you again. Um, uh, I got a, a little bit of the examples that that you provided, and and the general gist of the question. Perfect. So I'll just give you the question. It says, "What exactly will you do as MPP to address climate change locally and provincially, um, while holding Ford accountable for the Environmental Bill of Rights?" If he's reelected. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'd say that I, I do believe the government cares very, very deeply about the environment and has um, brought forward policies that respect the environment uh, in a variety of ways. I think people mix up the fact that the you know, the, a reduction uh, or not implementing a, a carbon tax does not mean somebody doesn't care about the environment. It means they think that's bad policy and makes it more expensive for uh, Ontarians at a time when they can afford it least. Um, as for the examples that you cited, uh, I think some of them occurred before my time as mayor, um, but I would tell you that I bring the same zeal and vigor uh, to uh, representing our area on the climate and environment uh, as I did when I was mayor because we brought in uh, a tree alteration and site alteration bylaw because of the examples of uh, clear cutting that we'd seen. Uh, we make sure that uh, on a site plan level uh, that uh, everything gets approved uh, before it starts. But you have to remember that uh, in an urban area, uh, there are gonna be situations where some trees uh, are taken down um, because it's a uh, private property, um, but we always work with the property owners to retain what we can uh, and make sure that the environment is respected. So on both a party level, uh, I know there's a lot of care and concern there. I think that's one of the reasons, again, why the Premier is so excited that we can transition our auto sector away from fossil fuels and to one of electrification. Uh, and on a, a local level, uh, you know, I sat on two councils that um, made declarations about uh, how serious the, the climate situation is and that we want to continue to plan uh, and execute to make sure that uh, our environment is preserved uh, and, and enhanced as we go forward. So I'll continue to do that work. Great. Thank you very much, Graydon. Uh, our readers, um, would you like to close out with a statement? Yeah, again, I'll just say um, how honored I've been to be uh, an elected official for the last 16 years and 
and make decisions. Um, it's it's not an easy job uh, to be the decision maker, um, and it's not a job where your goal should ever be to make everyone happy. It should be to make uh, the communities and the places that you represent uh, a better place. Um, and and you know it's about helping people, and uh, that's what I uh, want to bring to being the the next MPP in Perry Sound Muskoka, and that's what I know uh, I can bring. Uh, it's not a matter of you know I hope to dot 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 if I get elected. Uh, I have been elected. Uh, I have been in the situation where uh, I've been uh, in times of crisis and had to make uh, serious decisions that impacted uh, people's uh, lives and livelihoods. Um, and so uh, I know the ropes and I'm ready to get to work uh, and I'm ready to work for a government that wants to keep Ontario moving forward uh, and, and getting things done. Uh, and that includes all the things that we talked about today. Um, you know, government doesn't need to be uh, uh, something that is uh, this, not that. Um, effective governments, uh, you know, work on multiple files at once. That's why we have multiple ministries. And, and that's why this government has been so strong. They've had a really strong set of ministers that have driven a lot of files forward over the last four years and will continue to do so. Uh, over the next four when, when elected. And I'm looking forward to being part of that, looking forward to representing the people in this riding and looking forward to representing, not ju again, just the people that vote for me, but everyone in this riding. Uh, my door has always been open. My phone has always been on to folks over the last uh, number of years, and that will certainly continue into the future. Thanks. Well, in closing then, thanks to everyone for attending this special live election event. We will be back for our final installment on Thursday at noon with Aaron Horvath, the NDP candidate. And remember, your vote counts. Thank you very much, Graydon, for coming and safe drive to Perry Sound. Thanks, a pleasure, and thanks to everyone for the questions. Bye-bye.